Welcome everyone. I'm your host, Joy Anderson with Preschool All-Stars, and we're going to be doing a monthly masterclass. We do this every single month in our Preschool All-Stars membership. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, go ahead and go to preschoolallstars.com to learn more about it. In today's monthly masterclass, we're going to learn all about how to create subscription boxes. So you'll able be able to increase your monthly amount that you can make, not just in charging tuition and registration fees, but you can even add subscription boxes as an add-on to your preschool families. We're so excited to share all of this with you. We have two amazing preschool all-stars to present today. Our very first presenter is Michelle Monroe, and then we'll be hearing from Terry Johnson as well. After that, we're going to do some Q&A and some takeaways. So super excited. We're going to turn the time over now to Michelle Monroe and go ahead and tell us all about your preschool and how you got into the subscription boxes. And we can't wait to learn more about you. All right. And we've got, uh, let's see here. Go ahead and we will unmute you, Michelle. You're good to go as soon as you unmute. Can you hear me? All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Monroe. I am the owner of We Wise Ones Preschool. Um, I've been running my preschool for about 13 years now. And um, I came up with the idea for subscription boxes, which are named We Wise Ones Story Kits. Um, Originally, it was an, uh, a way to create my own curriculum for my preschool kiddos. And the thought was, well, if I have to do it for them anyway, I might as well expand on that and sell the boxes with the curriculum inside. Um, I have to say that I am definitely not a master at this. I'm still learning, um, but I have learned a lot in the you know few weeks that I've been doing this. Um, but I haven't even officially launched yet. So I'm definitely not a master, um, but I'm gonna share what I, my thoughts are and what I'm doing. Um, and I'll definitely take any questions um, about what I'm doing um, and where I hope to go with this. Um, so originally, like I said, it was a way to uh, make the most of my time and reuse the curriculum that I'm creating for my own kids, um, as well as hold myself accountable to make sure that I am offering to my preschool kiddos the crafts and activities that I've told parents that I'm offering. Um, we all know we, all have, we have a plan at the beginning of the year and sometimes things go off course. And um, if I'm doing the subscription boxes, I have to make sure that I've ordered the materials I need and I'm sticking to the schedule I've created. Um, so that was, that was the plan. Um, we've since sort of, it's a work in progress. Everything is developing organically. Um, so the original plans that I had set in place are changing and not necessarily gonna end up being um, the box that I envisioned in the first place. Um, we do have to make it profitable. Um, and I also want this to be something that I enjoy doing. Um, and if at any point I decide, I don't wanna do this anymore, this is just too much work. You know, I've got to kind of tweak things because I don't want this to be something that feels like work to me. I want it to be fun. I want it to be an extension of what I'm already doing. Um, so I'll show you what I have in my first, well, it's supposed to be my first box. Now it's my mock box because we haven't officially launched. Um, I'm hoping to officially launch uh, for August, but we'll see. There's a lot of things that have to be set in place for, before that can happen. Um, a lot of legal things like a seller's permit and wholesale licensing and all that kind of stuff um, that I'm still working on. I'm still you know, learning about, but I'm getting there. So I did order my box, which I absolutely love. Um, I went against Joy's recommendation and spent big money on my beautiful box, but I love it. And um, I felt like it was something I needed myself to make me feel legit, really. <laughs> um, like I said, this is all new to me. So, you know, I have a little bit of the imposter syndrome going on where I'm learning, but I, it, it's going to take time. And I felt like the box was important for me to get my brand across um, and make me feel like a real company. So what is in my box? Um, this has changed as well from the beginning of uh, the plan. It's a monthly subscription activity box. Uh, originally I had geared it towards just preschoolers because that's what I work with. 
Um, but I've since expanded it for ages three to eight, I believe, um, because I believe a lot of these crafts in here and, and the books that I'm offering um, could be done with older kids as well. Um, but still, it's something I'm tweaking. But that's now my goal, ages three to eight. So when you first open the box, we have a story, which is where story gets from, comes from. Um, all the activities in the box are based off of a story. Uh, this was the box, the book I had originally cho chosen for the first box, I Don't Want to Be a Frog, uh, written by Dave Petty. Um, so basically all of the activities in the box would be frog related. Um, so you'd start off by reading the story. Um, I had also ordered a National Geographic book that is not a storybook. It's an informational book about frogs. Um, and I added this to the kit because I read this to my preschool uh, kiddos and they absolutely loved it. So I am using my preschool kiddos as a test subjects. A lot of them are test subjects for the items in my box and what, what kids really want, not just what I think they might want, um, but I've been reading them the books that I have in mind for future kits to see, you know, I ask them questions. Did you like this book? What did you like about the book? Did you not like it? Um, and a lot of them really liked the informational part of the book, uh, the, the informational book as well as the storybook. Um, so this book, this box is all about frogs. So we've got two books based on frogs. Then we have two crafts. Uh, these typically, they're bags like this. This the craft is actually already done because I had done this as a demonstration. Um, but typically there is a piece of paper in here and it gives you the name of the craft, um, the directions for the craft, the materials in the craft, and then the learning objectives that go along with the craft. So what the kids are getting out of this, fine motor skills, um, concentration, that kind of stuff. Uh, but basically, you would you would read the instructions, open up the bag, take out the materials, and then the kids would put together the craft. And they're typically really easy, super easy uh, crafts. Originally, you would stick these on with glue, and then you had stickers for the eyes, and then they would draw in the smiley face, and just the holes pre-cut, you would just stick in the, um, the blower for the tongue. And that's that's basically that craft. That was, the whole point was super easy, fun crafts um, that kids needed minimal supervision to create. Um, so that was one of them. The other craft, and obviously I've got, you know, all of this stuff is pre-bought stuff that I, you know, cut or I got the stickers on Amazon, construction paper, paper plates, blowers, um, all kinds of stuff you just piece together. The second craft in this box um, are, is a worksheet and I don't know what you would call the other thing, uh, but I created them on Canva. This is the frog life cycle. So the kids would cut out the circle, cut out this circle, and then you would attach the two with a metal brad. Um, in the middle and it spins so that you can see, you know, the life cycle starts with the eggs, moves on to the tadpoles. Tad so you would go over this, talk to your kids about um, the life cycle of a frog. And once they've kind of got the grasp, the idea of that, you would give them this worksheet, which is sequencing um, a frog's life cycle so that they would cut out these squares, um, put them in the correct order and then glue them down based on the life cycle that they just learned about. So again, super simple, easy, um, minimal parent um, oversight. Obviously, if you're using scissors with a three-year-old, you wanna be careful, you know, monitor that, make sure that they're using them correctly and safely, um, but not a whole lot of, you know, parent intervention. Um, the next activity that we have is game, a game. Um, this, I'm not 100% sure if I am leaving in the box or if I'm going to replace it with another craft, only because I'm having a really hard time coming up with games for preschoolers that are not the same version of the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so I really have to put some more thought into that um, and be a little more creative or just kind of 
get it out of there and add something else in its place. Um, but basically you would, the kids would roll the dice. There's four plastic frogs in here. Um, they would take turns um, trying to, you know, if they roll a three, they're gonna put their frog on a three. Um, if they uh, if they roll a one, they're gonna add one more and bring it up to four. So you're learning, you know, numbers, counting, addition, and then whoever reaches their fly at the top first um, wins. So we'll see. The other thing with this that I'm not quite sure about is um, even if I was just gearing this to preschoolers age three to six or three to five, there's a big difference between what a three-year-old can do and what a five-year-old can do. Um, so some of these games, the little ones may not quite be at the point where they're going to be able to grasp that and the older ones might get bored with it. Um, so again, I really have to think about um, the games, but I comment in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are with the games. Should I keep them? Should I replace them with something else? Um, I'm really torn on that because <laughs> I like the idea of a different activity other than a craft, but I just don't, not sure how I would get that to work for all ages without repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, the next activity in the box is a sensory activity which most of the time is going to be a Play-Doh set or kinetic sand set. Um, this one is based on frogs because it's from the, the obviously that's the theme of our box. Um, I've just started making my own Play-Doh, which I recommend to everybody. If you are buying store-made Play-Doh, homemade Play-Doh is so much better, um, super easy to make. I had never made it before. And I said, let me try this. And it comes out the consistency of just store-bought Play-Doh, um, but it smells so much better. It's cheaper to make. You can customize it. You can add essential oils to um, add scent to it if you want. You can add glitter to it. It's so much better than store-bought Play-Doh. Um, but so I've, I've made the Play-Doh, which is in the back. And then um, they kind of roll that out onto a table or whatever they're doing. And then they add little the little guys that are inside. There's a frog, there's a turtle, there's snakes, there's rocks, there's plants, just anything that you would find in a uh, a pond. So they're essentially with this creating a frog's habitat. Um, and sensory play is good for um, imagination, creativity, um, reducing anxiety, all that kind of stuff. And they, they tend to play with this kind of thing for over and over again for extended periods of time. So it's a nice boredom buster. And then the last thing that I have thrown into the box is a surprise item each month. Um, kids love like blind bags and, you know, the stupid little things that you get. They don't even know what they're paying for or what they're going to get, but they love the idea of a surprise. So I figured each box will contain some sort of small toy or item that goes along with the theme, um, but you won't know what this is until you open the box, um, which I'm actually playing around with the idea of each box being a surprise in general, but I don't know how that would go across as far as, um, a selling point if you don't know exactly what's in the box. I don't know how many people are going to want to buy it. Um, the way that I had planned on setting up the boxes is it's a monthly membership subscription. So I'm using my, my hub website um, and my hub in that way. Um, one, two, we we're going to have a limited number of members to start. So I'm planning on opening up the subscription at only 25 members. One, so that I'm starting slowly getting um, acclimated to this, making sure that I'm not overwhelming myself and I'm doing it correctly and um, it's not a sloppy process. But two, also, um, as Joy says, you want to create urgency and scarce scarcity. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't want it to be available to everybody right away. They have to get on a wait list. Um, and you know, it'll as as I feel more comfortable, as spots spots fill up, and then I feel more comfortable with the amount of boxes I'm doing. Um, I can open that up to more people later on. But at least this gives me it, it tells me how much I need to buy ahead of time because I know how many members I'll have. Um, so I don't have a ton of extra overstock. Um, but it also you know gives me a chance to. Not that I'm planning on having 500 subscribers right in the beginning, but you know, it gives me it makes it gives me the opportunity to make sure that I I know what I'm in for and it not just be a total surprise for me. Um, the questions, unfortunately, I didn't write them all down. Um, I thought kind of we were going to answer them as we went along, <laughs> um, 
but I know somebody asked me, um, what do you need? Can you use your, your um, preschool um, certifications for this? Um, I'm still in the process of this, but I believe you need a seller's permit because you need to charge tax. Um, my accountant said I can use my same EIN because that's listed under my name. So I can have multiple businesses listed under that. Um, so that's all set, but I do need a seller's permit. I need a wholesaler's permit so that I can buy things wholesale and not pay tax on them myself. Um, right now I'm in the process of that stuff. I have to, in Massachusetts, it goes by town. So right now I'm working with my town to get that all started and set up. Um, so right now I have just been buying my stuff, not wholesale on Amazon, um, which I have noticed a lot of other subscription box owners also buy stuff on Amazon because as you start researching what you wanna do, Facebook sees that and you start getting ads for everybody else's subscription boxes and um, sensory bins and all that. So you, you kind of get a little discouraged because you see a lot of people that you didn't realize are doing things very similar to you um, that starts coming into your world where, oh yes, this, this person is doing this. Oh yeah, the, that person's doing that too. Um, and as much as I'm trying not to copy anybody else, um, it, it can be difficult when you find these great items on Amazon and then you see them in somebody else's uh, subscription box or sensory bin. But you, you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. We're not purposely trying to copy anybody else, but um, make your own, put your own spin on it. Try and make things a little bit different. If you've come up with this great idea and then see somebody else has it, well, I'll just tweak this a little bit and change this a little bit so that it's not exactly the same. Um, but unfortunately, there's only so much you can do about that. Um, are they profitable? Not yet, because <laughs> I just started. Um, and the more subscribers you have, the more members you have, the more you can buy in bulk, the cheaper it's going to cost you per box. Um, I believe I read that you want to try to make your box, um, you want to get between 30 to 50% profit from your box. Um, don't quote me on that because I'm not 100%, but I think that's what I had read. Um, so, you know, usually you're starting out, you're not going to make that kind of profit. You've got to start small, gain subscribers. And then once you're able to um, buy in bulk, it's going to become more and more profitable. But right now it's just a way for me to um, extend on the, the curriculum theme that I have for my preschool and do something kind of fun. I, I think it's fun to create the boxes. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to add into that, but I'm not sure what it was. So I'm thinking maybe that might be the end of, oh, I'll show you my sensory bin real quick. Um, my thought with the sensory bins were I was going to add, use those as an add-on to the subscription boxes. So these are um, an extra fee, but they still go along with our theme. I don't know how well you can see this box. So this is a frog theme um, box. It's a little, yeah, I don't know if I can flip this without everything falling out. Um, but this one's a bit messy because my kids have been playing with it, but it's water beads. Um, and a, a, the same thing, a frog theme. We've got lily pads, we've got frogs, we've got snakes and turtles and all sorts of things in here. Um, and the kids love the water beads and they're actually really cheap to buy. Um, so that's a fun thing as an add-on. Um, overstock right now, uh, my plan with, because I don't have any subscribers, but I keep buying things so that I can test things out and have fun playing around with them. Um, my thought with all my overstock right now, so I don't go broke with all this stuff, is I'm creating sensory bins for my preschool kiddos, for birthday presents, for my son's friends, for birthday presents. Everybody's getting sensory bins. Everybody's getting books. Everybody's getting, you know, all the stuff that I can create with my leftovers. Um, and then I'm also hoping to do a few uh, vendor fairs and sell bins and pass subscription boxes um, at those type of things so that I don't end up with a whole bunch of stuff like I have now all over my house. <laughs> uh, all right, so that is, thank you for listening. I think that's that's pretty much everything that I could think of. I will definitely take questions when we're ready for that and try and answer anything I didn't answer during the presentation. Uh, but thank you for listening.
That was awesome, Michelle. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Okay, so I'm going to repeat a few things that I saw in the chat um, mm -hmm. so everybody knows what was said. When you had asked about what should I do about the games, we had some really good suggestions. Nikita mentioned maybe making a little idea for different rules based on the age, like different ways ages could play it. Heather mentioned uh, she likes to look up her state's early learning standards and create activities around them. So for instance, you know, accommodations to make it more challenging, maybe use two dice and add, subtract, roll, hop around that many times, hop over objects, around, crawl under, stuff like yep. that. Uh, Lakeisha said maybe adding a gross motor aspect of it that will eliminate boredom, encourage movement. Uh, Rhonda talked about Play-Doh and, and made a suggestion if we're making homemade Play-Doh, we might want to add a disclaimer uh, that you don't put anything harmful in it and you're released of liability if they have an allergic reaction. <laughs> so that might be important. Um, and then I have a couple questions for you, if that sounds good. Perfect. Okay, great. So Dominion asked, where do you get a seller's permit and a wholesale license? Uh, I'm still working on it, but you there's a chain of things you have to do um, first and one is get a business certificate from my town so um my town's being a little slow with me um so as soon as I can get that started um they'll tell me the next step of where I need to go to get the next the next license the next permit that kind of thing so I'm starting with my my local town um and and we'll go from there Perfect. hopefully it's not a super long process yeah <laughs> And so Monique could ask the question, do you make kits to order or do you make a bunch? And my guess is you're going to make 25 per month because that's your number of subscriptions, right? Right. I, a lot of them, when I was researching items, a lot of items um, come in 12 or 20, a pack of 25. If I'm buying them in bulk, that's the lowest you can buy for a lot of items. Um, so that's my plan is to, you know, uh, I have a lot already upstairs of, you know, extra items. So if I figured if I start with 25, that's kind of a, a roundabout number where I hopefully won't have a ton of extra things left over. Love that. Okay. Do you have a certain amount that you shoot for, for materials? Like I'm going to spend 10 bucks per box or 15. What is your goal for how much you spend per box right now? Right now, the boxes are costing me about 25 to make. Okay. Um, crafts are only about $2 per craft. Sensory activity is a little bit more than that. Um, the books is what's costing me a good amount of money. Um, but obviously that's the basis of the kit. So I can't take them out. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I love the books. So, <laughs> so uh, that's, that's where my money is really going is the books and the box, the boxes alone cost me about $7. Um, but hopefully I'm going to, you know, that was a good investment and uh, hopefully I'm going to get my money back. <laughs> so, so let me ask you that um, with your boxes, I had suggested everybody goes to uline.com, buys a white box, gets a logo sticker from stickermule.com. But did you do my other idea, which was to go to pack lane to create the custom box? I did. I had asked you where you got your boxes yeah. from because they just are so awesome. Yeah. Um, and you had said pack lane, but you suggested you know, getting the stickers instead. Yeah. Um, when I priced it out, it was going to cost for the size box I needed. Um, it was going to cost me about $5 per box. Now this is with tax and everything shipping as well. Um, if you go in on it, it's going to tell you my $7 boxes are $5 boxes. Um, but once you add in the cost of shipping, um, it ends up being about $7 per box. So yeah. it was only going to cost me about $5 a box, which really, I mean, that's two dollars a box you are saving a ton of money when you're ordering 100 200 boxes um but i was hoping to roll that into the subscription the price of the subscription um and i figured i'd take a chance and and hopefully my box will just be so awesome looking that <laughs> it won't matter that it costs two dollars more than you know the plain box with the sticker on it so right. i did also get stickers um that i am putting on the top of my sensory bins um yeah so Nice. And how many activities per box do you try to shoot for? Tamiko asks. Originally, I was doing two to three crafts, one to two games, and a sensory activity. Mm -hmm. um, I've reduced that a little bit because um, it was taking me a lot of time to prep certain crafts. Um, and it was, I want to increase the quality of the crafts, not just have so many crafts 
um, but cheap ones. Like I, I wanted it to be something that, you know, people are like, oh, I'm going to pay $49 for all these paper crafts. I want it to be something that they feel like they're getting their money's worth. Um, so in order for me to do that, I had to reduce the amount of activities in the box, um, but make them a little bit higher quality. Yeah. Okay. And then your bags that I saw in there, are they two gallon Ziploc or where do you get the bags from? The bags I was getting on Amazon, um, I had originally ordered ones to make sure they were big enough to hold a 11 and a half by eight and a half, a standard size piece of paper, um, because that's what I put in there for my, um, my directions. Um, I had ordered a size bigger, figuring I might need the room if I'm putting in a lot of items, um, but it looks like I probably don't. I could probably just order the, the standard um, eight and a half by 11 and a half, and it should fit fine. Perfect. I love the extra on the top to kind of allow for that, that bend. Um, and so you were saying, you know, at this point, it's not necessarily profitable at this moment um, because it's costing about $25 per box or so. Um, what are you going to charge parents? Is $25 per box what you're going to charge? No, I'm, I'm planning on charging $49 per box. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll, I'll, you know, make a decent profit off of it, but we'll see. I mean, it also does depend too on the amount of time I'm putting into the box. Right. Um, I don't mind, you know, making a 30% profit if I'm just kind of buying things, throwing them together real quick and putting them in the box. But if I'm doing a whole ton of creating worksheets and cutting and um, all that kind of stuff, it's just not, it doesn't feel worth it. Um, my thought was to make this my life easier and, you know, a little bit of extra side income um, because I have this stuff already, or I had these ideas already. Um, I don't want to create a whole ton of extra work for myself and then just be stressed and, you know, throw it all out the, the window. We don't want to do that. <laughs> And I think too, with a $49 price point, a custom box like that fills on point. Um, something really quick, you can ship those directly. You don't have to put them in another box. You just seal them up and stick the label on the backside there. Uh, another thing I wanted to add for you as far as books go, are you in the Scholastic uh, Reading Club? Like, do you have an account with them? I did years ago and I didn't use it very often. So that's something I should probably look back into. I highly suggest because with your books, uh, you should be able to get like that frog book for a buck. So if yeah. you're spending more than that, um, and in fact, what I'd probably do is I'd go, go to Scholastic Reading Club, get an account with them as a teacher. Um, and as a private school, you can have an account as a teacher. Um, and then what you would do is um, go look at their, their bulk buys for their books because you can get you know 10 books for a dollar each or 20 books for a dollar each um, and they're the exact same book um, and there's anyways and you can also buy with points and you can have those go you know you can have your parents buy books and then you start accumulating points as well but the idea is we can start getting that book cost down all of a sudden you open up your margins and then the other thing is possibly even hey here's the books that are a dollar you know, which would yep. sound like a fun idea for a story kit, right? Right. Yeah, no, that's definitely a great idea. Cool. Don't want to learn. Lots to look into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, everyone. Um, thank you, everyone. We're going to, I'm going to look at your questions. We'll add a few at the very end as well. Um, Michelle, you're awesome. Any last words you'd like to add? Uh, no, I, I'll go back after the live and look at, I'm so not good with doing the chats and the answering questions on lives, um, but I'll definitely go back and uh, answer anybody's question after the live is over so that, you know, everybody's, I'm, I'm answering all the questions that I can. Yes, totally. Oh, one last thing I do want to ask you, are you mm -hmm. charging shipping on top of that? And what do you think the estimated shipping cost will be? Um, I said, I sent out 11, um, sample boxes in the beginning to get an idea of what people wanted, what they thought of the materials. Um, and specifically, even though I didn't have to ship all these out, I shipped out a few of them because I wanted to get an estimate of how much shipping was. And it was about $10 per box. Yeah. Um, somebody had asked before about international shipping. Um, I will not do that. I do have, I have friends who live in England and I did ship a box to them just because they're friends and I, you know, they wanted to help and I knew it was going to cost me a fortune because I ship for every Christmas um, and it was $60 to ship that. You know, <laughs> box. So it's definitely not feasible to do international shipping um, unless you're doing it as a favor to somebody that, you know. And are you going to charge the, the parents will pay the shipping then? On top? The parents will pay the shipping. Okay. Yep. 
Love yeah, because I'm hoping to also do local pickup for people who live locally to me so that they don't have to pay shipping. So um, if I do, if I add shipping in automatically, then there's no, you know, that's, that's not an option. So yeah. awesome. Well, Michelle, thank you so much again. Really appreciate all of the wisdom that you've shared with us today. Appreciate you. Thank you. Holy cow, that's awesome. Okay, so I did also want to say um, one thing, a different way to have a pr different frame, a different view perspective on this is if we don't want it to be profitable, like we just want it to have as a value add. So there's different ways to view this. Do we want it to be a value add to our preschool parents and do, or do we want it to be profitable, like an actual income stream? Okay. So in the case that as you're starting off and perhaps you haven't figured out your numbers, you know, and, and maybe it's not perhaps being profitable yet. Here's the key. Here's the key. We don't want it to cost you money. We don't want you to go in the hole to provide this value, okay? So my thought is if you were able to figure out a way that parents could pay X amount for it as an add-on, okay? And even if with your time, I because I was I would always count in time into this, your time and the money for the kids, it's not really like making you too much money. But imagine you just gave so much value to your preschool parents and it didn't cost you anything. OK, so they're getting more value in your program. They're loving everything. So they're, the point is they're diving deeper with you. You're right. They're spending more money. Um, they're diving deeper. They're becoming, um, you know, better preschool families for longer. Right. They're going to refer you to more people because they're getting more value from you. So that's one way to put it is like, hey, I understand I might not make money from this, but you know what? It's giving me more value, which is going to increase the number of months my parents stay with me. It's going to increase the referrals, dot, 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 right? Okay. Uh, the other version is how can we make it profitable? And in fact, uh, we have Lakeisha Tibbs, who is going to walk us through her model before we talk to Terry Johnson. Uh, she just came on and said, hey, mine are actually super profitable. So Lakeisha is going to break down how she does hers. And let me find her really quick and unmute her. Okay, perfect. Lakeisha, feel free to come on and uh, share all your ideas as well. All right, Lakeisha, are you there? Gotta find you somewhere. Let's see, Lakeisha, are you there? <laughs> Go ahead and unmute if you can. There you are. I, I am here. I'm in the bank. Give me, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I'm finishing up my errands. Give me one second. I'm going to mute that for just a second. Okay, you're fine. Come back on when you're ready. Um, so yeah, so Lakeisha is actually out and about doing her errands. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions really quick in the chat. Post your questions. I'll see if we can answer them before we go to Lakeisha here. Uh, let's see. Um, Rhonda had asked, do you need another business name in DBA? You don't. Like You can keep it under the exact same uh, thing as long, like for instance, you know, Michelle's is we wise ones and she just adds story kits. Makes sense. You know, we, why was we wise ones preschool, we wise ones summer camp, you know, we wise ones kindergarten. So that's the cool thing is you can just, you know, add a different variable, uh, there, uh, Rose, you can franchise franchising is incredibly expensive. So I wouldn't even touch that until you get very knowledgeable about how to do subscription boxes. Uh, let's see here. How many activities she put in boxes? Uh, Michelle, you want to answer that in the comments real quick? Love this. Yes. Perfect. Um, Connie just mentioned they have monthly specials on Scholastic. It's the Judy Newman email from Scholastic. You want $1 book specials every two to three weeks. That's perfect. Um, somebody asked, what's the name of the website she ordered the personalized box from? That is packlane.com. And that's the one where you can create your custom ones and it's got color and it prints directly on the box itself. Okay, awesome. Let's see, uh, Brianna, so you don't need the permanent license if you're using the box to add value to your preschool. Yeah, so Brianna, I think that's where you have to, that's a good question. I'm not gonna answer that one per se. Um, but for instance, if you don't charge for the box, so for if you wrap it into your tuition, here's a different, here's a different way to view this, guys. If you wrap it into your tuition and they, you know, they get uh, with their $200 a month uh, preschool experience, they get the, um, 
they get your preschool classes, they get your pre-recorded, they get live classes, whatever, you know, they get local classes, they get free field trips, they get a free t-shirt, whatever, and they get a free, you know, subscription box, free sensory kit, free uh, story kit, whatever it is, but it's wrapped into the price of your tuition, then no, you're not going to have to get sell, you're not going to have to pay for sales tax, you're not going to have to get seller fee, seller permits and all these different things, because you're not charging an actual amount for that item to go out. However, if you do start selling physical items, right? So like, yes, I'm going to sell this subscription box and it's a physical item. Then you definitely want to go down the route of that. Okay. Michelle says, as far as the number of activities she does, the original plan was two to three crafts and one to two games plus a sensory activity. Uh, she might cut down the games. Rhonda says she's thinking of offering craft kits to her preschool kids, but also to the older kids like siblings. Great idea. Love that. Um, yeah, I think as, as long as it's kind of in the same vein of what the nature of your business is, you don't need to be creating new DBAs everywhere for every single business, right? But if you were we wise ones preschool and all of a sudden you decide to start a dog walking service, then that would not be in the same vein, right? The same theme of what you're currently doing. So yeah, you would need a different DBA for that. Oh, cool. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Lakeisha, let me know if you've wrapped up or maybe you're checking out right now. And if so, we'll probably play Terry's video uh, while we wait for you. So we'll wait right there for just a second. Terry added some really good um, ideas to, before I play her video, I do want to read something she had mentioned because she forgot to share this in her video. She talked about delivery issues because I had said, what do you do if um, somebody doesn't actually receive their box? Because that can be a huge problem, right? Like you're shipping out the box. Number one, you had to pay for all the materials in the box, the box itself and the shipping to them, right? So you're, you're out money in that regard. Of course, hopefully you've recouped it with whatever they paid you. So cool, that would have equaled it out or made some profit. However, what if they didn't receive the box? Now you just have double, um, you know, cost, right? So it's important, Michelle, to also think about like, even if you make 25 boxes, you almost have to add a variable of like, how many boxes should I have on the side in case somebody doesn't get one, I have to ship another one out. So this is what Terry says about deliverability issues. She says she actually hasn't yet had any personally in the two years that she sold her sensory kits, but she did manage a business um, when she took a break from the classroom with, since, with uh, subscription boxes. And this is what that process was for that company. She says, if a customer reported that a package was not delivered, we would go through this process. If it was a first time customer that didn't receive the package, she would first check the tracking number to see if the information indicated delivery to the address on file, right? If the tracking indicated it was delivered to the correct address, she would advise the customer to file a police report as it was theft, okay? If it's a returning customer and has already had several packages sent and received, then she knows it's a legit, you know, address and, and it's probably just a mistake on the, the post office. So she would ship another package and she would file a claim with USPS to recoup the loss, okay? In some cases, she says she would ship those packages with a signature required to prevent an issue from going on, uh, to prevent an issue going forward. She says if the package was delivered to a different address, not a, at fault to the customer, she would ship out another box immediately and follow up with USPS again to recoup the cost. Now, if the customer provided an incorrect address though, because sometimes that happens, they forget to put their uh, apartment number or whatever, and the package is sent back, then the customer would be required to pay for the return shipping, right? So if it was 10 bucks, they're gonna have to pay that 10 bucks again because it was their fault they put in the incorrect address. Um, if somebody wanted a refund, like they got the box and they weren't happy with it, she says she would refund the cost of the product, but not the shipping. So for instance, if the box cost in Michelle's case, 50 bucks and the shipping was 10 bucks, then they would get a refund of the 50 and not the shipping, right? But of course you still would be at a loss of whatever the box itself cost you. So you'd be, you know, a negative, maybe 25 or something like that. Okay. All right. Lakeisha, let me know if this is a good time. Otherwise I'll go ahead and play uh, Terry's video. Hello, can you hear me? I sure can. All right, I'm sitting in my car, so I don't know how 
the sound works. I'm not sure if this if it sounds okay or if it's echoing. Sounds awesome. Know. Nope, you're great. Yeah, go ahead. So tell us about how you do your subscription boxes. So I have two subscription boxes that I do. Um, I own a daycare and an enrichment center. We have our preschool and all those fun things. Um, thanks to you, Joy. Um, so we have a lot going on within our program. One of our subscription boxes is a monthly painting, sip and paint kit subscription box. Um, that kit is $50 a month. It comes with the canvases, the easels, the smock, a snack. We read the story virtual. So we have in-person and virtual. Our clients, it ranges from anywhere from 10 kids to about 40 kids um, per session. It's done one Saturday out of the month. And um, our response has been amazing for it. Um, so we have that. And that's open to everybody. We um, actually, over the summer, have gotten a couple summer camps that have actually purchased these kits to do these sip and paint sessions with their summer camp. So if you're looking for easy money, if you have a cricket or you know someone with a cricket or um, my, my company also, we sell those on the side. I design T-shirts and stuff on the side of everything else. And so I design our canvases and they all have a theme and then they have different stuff that goes with it. Our upcoming one is an ice cream social. And so for that one, we have a design with ice cream, um, ice cream cones on the canvas. Um, they get ice cream bowls and they get just little baggies with like gummies and sprinkles, things to put on their ice creams. Obviously, we're not sipping ice cream. So parents have to, you know, provide that portion. And we are now doing our sessions at the library, which opens it up for us to get more clientele because in the summers, the libraries are full of kids. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing mm -hmm. that at the library. So that's one of our subscription boxes. Our second one is through our virtual kit that we sell. So our second one is I have toddler school, we call it T school, and then we have preschool. And those are um, early morning sessions. They're our sessions two times a week that we do in the morning. I don't know how many other programs do it, but our program, we have kids in person. And then our program is actually utilized in um, parents that are homeschooling, um, home daycares, and we also have child care centers all over that join us and connect with us. And so there's a price for them to join our sessions, but we also charge a price for if they want the subscription box. So our subscription boxes for those typically are about $50 for the box. Um, we send them out monthly, and within that, um, they have different items and activities. They are little calendar pieces. So when we say, oh, today's date is June 29th, can you find the number 29? Everybody has the same exact calendar pieces and every kid is rushing to find that number 29 to hold it up in that camera, whether they're in the daycare center, a home daycare, a homeschool setting, or in our program, everybody's everything is the same. Their flashcards are the same. Everything is the same. And from what we've seen, um, it just helps the kids to be more interactive and engaged in everything that we're doing. We have um, kids who are typically developing and we also have special needs kids. So we do a little, a little bit of sign language. We're not as great with it as Ms. Beth, um, but we do sign language. Um, I am trained in pets. So we do picture exchange communication with a lot of kids. So we just have a lot that we do within our, our programs and a lot that we send out within those kits because a lot of my families that utilize my kits typically are families that have someone in that home has a child with special needs. Um, I make sure that our kits are modified so that it's not really based on an age range as much as it's based on a skill level for the kids, which is why I was saying in the messages, if you do ages three to eight and you touch on every level that a child can learn, then you're, the kids are not going to be bored. So for a game, you want to incorporate some type of gross motor. You want to incorporate some type of art or fine motor activity because then that meets the needs of all those kids ages three and up. So um, I order our boxes from Uline. I order our stickers from Sticker Mule. I design things. I also sublimate. So I have two sublimation printers. So I order blank boxes. I sublimate. I design my own tissue paper. Um, because I'm out running errands, I can't show any of those things, but I would love to be able to share some of that information with you all. But all of our stuff is custom. Um, in the summer, we have summer camp kits that we sell to daycares, and those are just our subscriptions for the summer. Um, it's a one-time fee that they pay is $75, and the camps and the daycare centers get two t-shirts, a tote bag, a water bottle, a lanyard, a wristband, 
and a maze or some type of puzzle, depending on what age they select on on our website for uh, those items. And we customize it to the daycare or the summer camp's name. And then it's five dollars per shirt for each additional shirt that they want the kids names on and things like that. So I think all of my info should be somewhere in your system. I've had a lot of huge changes in my life. Um, a lot of things have changed, but I'm still here. I'm still standing, still up and running and still building things out um, as quickly and you know positively as I can for that. So I don't know. I'm hoping all that information is super, super helpful for you all. And also, um, what else was it? Somebody had asked about the sales and use tax. So if you run it under your EIN, then you don't, under your EIN, and it's something that's incorporated in your program, you don't necessarily have to have a sales and use tax if you can filter it in in a way that it's a part of your tuition. But if it's something completely separate, like for my t-shirt business, I have a sales and use tax. I have a wholesaler's permit. I do vendor events and things like that because I design my canvases and my tote bags and everything in my t-shirt business, I don't need a separate sales and use tax for my daycare business to sell it because I just buy it in bulk from myself, from my other company. They all have their own LLCs and EIN. So I just buy it in bulk from the other company and I show that transaction from the daycare's business account to the t-shirt business account to show, okay, I made a purchase to myself through this business. Um, and that's how I get away with it. I don't know how everybody else does it, but I know for me and for my accountant, that way works amazing. Um, it works fine. I do a ton of vendor events. I usually book two booths side by side, one for my t-shirts and stuff and the other for my daycare stuff um, because I do tutoring and then we have enrichment programs. We have virtual coding and robotics. We have a virtual drama club and we have an art program and all those are virtual and they're also in person at the libraries. And so I'm constantly a walking advertisement for everything <laughs> that we do. And for you ladies, if you are not a part of the group on um, the All-Stars, you need to get in. If you're not a part of the hub, you need to get on it. I'm having some issues with my hub, but it's more of me not really having the time to sit down and do what I need to do to make it happen. It's not really an issue with the hub. It's a me finding time kind of issue, but there's so much so many resources and positive things within this group that you all can gain from and that our kids can gain from. And during all of this stuff with COVID and chaos with the government, like these families need us. And so if you are, if your heart is in this, ladies, jump in and just do what you can. Um, I'm sure my info is in there somewhere. You guys can email me. You can reach out. I may not respond immediately. My program's open till midnight every day. I'm actually heading back home now to open up for our two o'clock shift today. Uh, we're going to the movies. So hopefully all that info was super, super helpful for you all. Lakeisha, that was amazing. I have two quick questions before you go. Uh, one of yes, them is, I assume that you don't ship anything because you're dealing with local people that are they picking up? Or are you dropping off the kits or are you shipping them? I ship as well. I have um, families in Arizona and um, New Mexico and North Carolina, Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, we have families all over that we ship all of our kits to. I use Pirate Ship. Um, I have a disclaimer on my website that basically states that they need to purchase insurance. Mm. And if they, hey, Miss Kathy, yes, I've shipped to Miss Kathy. She also uses our virtual um, program and our ship and paint stuff. But I ship through Pirate Ship. I haven't had any issues with people not receiving boxes. I have had issues with people lying on my t-shirt business saying they didn't receive something that they did. And we will verify that it has been shipped to that address. And if it's verified that it's been shipped to that address, our disclaimer states that they have to fight with UPS or USPS to get their items. Because once we ship it, it's really, it's out of our hands. It's honestly nothing we can do about it. Right. Um, we do, you know, encourage families to do, um, if they have issues, some people will say, hey, I have issues with getting my mail. So then you want to purchase additional insurance and there's a cost for that. But then if they don't get their package and they haven't insured for $200, USPS is going to find that package before they give you $200. Right. So if you add insurance to it, you're going to get it. I do hand the cost of shipping off to families, but because I use pirate ship, I can do a flat rate. And let's say, I think for most of our stuff, I just charge like $10 or $15 for shipping. And because it's through my other company, sometimes I eat the cost of that. But with doing everything that I'm doing and shipping out 50 or 60 kits, it balances out and it's not really a financial hardship 
mm -hmm. on my end um, for it. So let me ask you this, can our preschool all stars, are they able to use your service where they would say, hey, I have 10 students who would like a subscription box and they choose your subscription boxes to be shipped to their students? Yes, ma'am. And okay. they can, if they want, if they want it to be customized with their logo, because my t-shirt business does sublimation and customization, yeah. they just have to send me two images of their logo so we can make sure that it isn't pixelated once we get it put on the item. Um, and we customize, I customize for, there's a couple, there's a, it's called Crayola Camp or something like that that's out here. I customize um, their t-shirts, um, their graduation shirts for their pre-K, their subscription boxes and it's all based on my theme it just has their logos on it because yeah. that's what they paid for for their bags okay so i think right now if anybody wants to get into the subscription box for your preschool families but you don't want to go do all the the from the groundwork <laughs> to go figure it out yourself this sounds like a genius idea let's connect you with lakeisha now friend i don't know what your your website is for this we need to get everybody where do we send them to what's your website or is it an email that you want them to what would so what's your preferred contact they can i would prefer email because my website right now i have one of our sisters that's actually helping me uh, with my website and connecting it to the hub and my cloud flare and something yeah. else they don't like each other apparently my websites and stuff and so <laughs> nobody can find any of it with the website um so you guys can just email me and then once they get that figured out, if you all can give me like a week or two for them to figure that life out, then yeah. we can be up and running. Um, if you are local to, I'm in Maryland. And so anybody that's local to Maryland, we can do that. Or if you can kind of message me and give me like a really detailed list of what it is that you're wanting, attach your logos and things like that. I can send you back information on the cost and things like that. And if the website isn't up, we can do invoicing through QuickBooks so that you still have a paper trail of what you've ordered and all of that. Okay. And what's the email? I've got one over the here. The email right is, it. it's I-M-E-C Learning Academy at gmail.com. And it's all one word. I, and my daycare is Intelligent Minds Early Childhood. So it's just the acronym for that. I, M as in Mary, E as in Elephant, C is in Charles, Learning Academy at gmail.com. I got it. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that for everybody. I as in Idaho, M as in Mary, E as in Elephant, C as in Charlie, Learning Academy at gmail.com. I'll also include that in the YouTube description. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just check the description. The email is right there. I'm so excited. Lakeisha, I know Natalie's helping you with your hub website to get it connected. So Lakeisha, again, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom with us. You are awesome. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to go and get my life together before these kids. <laughs> and you awesome. all have an amazing, amazing day. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, friends. Now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, Terry Johnson has put together a video for us. Uh, she wasn't able to be here live with us, so she did record a presentation on how she creates her subscription boxes. She does sensory bins. She's done them for years, and I can't wait to um, have you learn from her. And I'm here to discuss my sensory bin business. So Believe Academy actually started sensory bins in 2020 during uh, the pandemic, just trying to keep my, my son busy while I was at home. And it snowballed into me actually selling them online. I started selling them on my website and I didn't get too much of a buzz being that my website was in a sea of millions of other websites. So at that point, I decided to start selling on Etsy and now I sell on Create Joy. And primarily all of my orders come from either Etsy or Create Joy and I have a few orders in in my on my website from repeat customers but at this time because I'm so focused on my preschool I haven't really been advertising those so I have primarily repeat customers that are shopping my sensory bins so before I get into the nitty-gritty details let me tell you just a little bit about my sensory bins for my business I actually have the same LLC because it's actually the same name so I didn't need to use a different LLC for my business because it's exactly the same name. All of my sensory bins are inspired by something that my son enjoys. 
So I have a rainbow bin due to his love of colors. I have a gingerbread bin due to his love of the gingerbread man, mine also. A uh, chica chica boom boom sensory theme bin, which is actually one of my top sellers on Etsy right now. It's so very colorful and educational that a lot of parents and teachers purchase these kits for their own classrooms. I also use um, inspiration online. So if I see um, a cute sensory bin, I'll check to see if my son likes it. And if I make one for him and he likes it, then that's the green light for me to actually go ahead and uh, make, make some sensory bins for, for resale. A Play-Doh kit, that normally comes in a plastic container, like this one with my printed logo on the front. And I'll get some more about the, the container later. And it comes with a few toys, as well as eight ounces of Play-Doh and digital activities that I send within 24 hours. And I have two different kinds of learn and play sensory boxes. I have a Play-Doh box, and then I have a dyed rice or pasta or beans box that I send. And they have similar tools, sensory tools, depending on the different themes that I have. I do offer them as an add-on purchase to my, my school, but it's separate, even though the parents can purchase on my school's website. But I, I have another website that's primarily uh, for my sensory bin. So I have two different websites. I have one for my school and I have a website for my sensory business, but I ha also have links to go from my school to my sensory business and then from my sensory business back to my school. I call them my learn and play bins because they come with five educational activities that I create myself through Canva. My materials from Amazon, um, I purchase them in bulk. So I try to get more bang for my buck, so to speak. So I purchase them from Amazon, the Dollar Tree, Walmart, and also my personal favorite is Hobby Lobby. So I started the process to sell on Amazon Handmade, which is a, a different department of the, the umbrella of Amazon. And the reason why I decided on Amazon Handmade is because I personally uh, make the Play-Doh and dyed rice. And so with those, you're given an exception without having to purchase um, SKU numbers for um, for fulfillment for the the uh, the sensory bins. Now I pack and ship myself. I take a day out of the month to pack about fifteen or twenty boxes because that's pretty much my average that I sell a month right now because I do no advertising. So the um, the orders that I get are just from really me posting my, my son's playing with the sensory bins or from past ads that I have. Because like I said, right now, I'm I'm just focused on my preschool. Sensory business is located on a, a Wix website and I use Stripe as my payment processor. So I try to see exactly what I have at home first and see what pieces can go for multiple kits before purchasing. And I do have a formula that I use to make to make a profit off of my sensory bins. So I add up the materials and I try to average out no more than seven to ten dollars coming out of my pocket for the actual container itself, for the tissue paper and the little cards that go into it, as well as the little trinkets that I use and the the sensory fillers that I use. So if I'm making a a, a dyed box, like using pasta. I use, I like to use pasta or dyed rice because those are uh, cheaper to, to buy and then to, to make. So I like using those and then um, I'll go to Play-Doh or chickpeas. I do also do custom orders. So if I have a, a order for uh, dyed rice, there they can substitute it on a Play-Doh or something else. It's from Amazon. This is actually a sticker that I got from Prince Place. 
and that's a, a website that designs stickers online. My plastic box, I got this from the Dollar Tree and I bought this in bulk on their website. This box is, I believe it is 10, 10 and 10.9 times seven times uh, two, I believe. And this box dimensions are nine by six and a half by two and three fourths, just so that you can get an idea because buying boxes can be very, very hard. So it's, it's easy when you have the dimensions to try to compare what you may need. Shipping is very important right now. I only ship to the United States because it's easier. And also I'll ship to Canada too. Um, and sometimes if I have a request to ship to the islands because I haven't had issues shipping there, I'll ship there. But because uh, Europe is changing a lot of their shipping regulations and you need different numbers as a company to ship, and then some customers don't want to pay duties and taxes, I tend to just stay with the United States if I possibly can, unless I have a, a, a request to send it somewhere else. And if you do, just make sure that your customers know that the duties and the, the fees are required by their country. That's not a fee that goes to you or something that you should determine. As far as my uh, shipping, depending on what it is, like um, items over $35 on Etsy, I'll, I'll uh, take the cost. So I'll add um, the fees up front so that I'm only out a couple of dollars. For, um, for my sensory bins. But the sensory bins that are cheaper than the customers um, will have to pay for the shipping. So for instance, I have my Chica Chica Boom Boom Inspired Kit. That's $18.50. Um, the customers will pay $7.95 shipping on that. And even though shipping may be more than that, depending on where it's being shipped to, I still recoup a couple of dollars because I add it to the actual price of my products. So that's something that they that they don't see. And for shipping, I use a uh, pirate ship, Shippo, and Easy Ship. Those and the reason why I use diff, uh, those three is because depending on where I'm shipping to, and I live in Georgia, so depending on the the customer, I may get a, a better rate at, on different different companies using different companies. And sometimes you'll get a discount by using your own box. Sometimes you'll get a discount by um, by using the priority mail and all of it I ship through the post office. So I'll schedule for the the post office to come pick pick up the, the priority mail. But a lot of times you can also ask the companies, um, I believe it's pirate ship that pirate ship and easy ship that you can request a pickup using your own box. So I like this box because I can put all of my things inside of it. And it's, it still is pretty light. So it's about two, two to three pounds. Um, now, rice is rice can get very heavy and Play-Doh can get very heavy. So sometimes it'll cost $10 to ship this box. But on average, it's, it's about $8 for, for every box, unless I'm shipping to Georgia, but that's very rare. Most of my customers are in, uh, uh, like Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan, all th that region. So while I don't offer the sensory bins as an add-on to my program, I do offer a free welcome kit with my returning or registering students for the fall. And that's completely free. And I add crayons, uh, markers, scissors, construction paper, and glue stick. And I send those, and I also send like a mini uh, sensory sensory bin with uh, with that. It, it looks like it's inside of a pencil box. I don't have those now because I didn't get ready for that. But inside of a typical pencil box, that, that's a good size for a travel travel sensory bin. So I send those out as a thank you to my parents for registering for the school year. So my sensory bins, they're they're geared toward children ages three to seven. Because typically, the sensory bins can, can be used on a variety of levels. So I love using it in the classroom because you can really differentiate 
depending on what your what your lesson is and multiple children won't know exactly what level another student is on so everyone can feel confident and learn because they don't know exactly what one student could be working on so you can like for instance i have my ice cream sensory bin that's coming out um in a couple of days and I like to use it to work on names. So you can use the ice cream scoop to work on uh, letter recognition. You can use it to work on names, measuring. So those different scoops, you can use it to work on different things. So that's why I love sensory bins. My other sensory bins, they're created and sent using my description box. So I want to give you an idea of what's inside one of my boxes. So here it is, open it up. And I have a thank you to my customers. I also have my social media handles over there. And then I have some tissue paper. I have a thank you card. Um, first time customers, they get an actual thank you envelope as well with a card, a handwritten note on the inside. But this is a returning customer. And then I have my sensory, my sensory items in plastic. Can fit quite a lot in here. And this is my box for my monthly subscriptions. That's the, I send it just like this. I just put the label on the other side. And then customers that purchase individual kits, they get an actual box like this. And you can fit quite a bit in here too. And this is my very Hungry Caterpillar inspired kit. Thank you so much for listening to me. It's been a pleasure to deliver the message to you. And I hope you have much success on your future endeavors. Goodbye. Wasn't that awesome? Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Okay, let me pin myself again. Terry, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that you're not live with us right now, but Terry, thank you for recording that for us, um, sharing all the wisdom. I am going to message her really quick to see if she can share how much she charges for her subscription kits. Um, and then what we're going to do while we're waiting for that answer, we're going to send everyone out to breakout rooms. I'm going to pause this video and we're going to come back for takeaways. So stay tuned one second here. It is an activity an activity kit that would um, emphasize one of our summer session themes. Um, I'm just closing out my summer session today, the last day. So I'm gonna do an ice cream activity bin that would reinforce some of the things that we talked about, some games, some printing name, name printings in there. Um, you know, so I think that I can do that. And it's a good way to encourage them to attend the fall session. Oh, totally. I love the, you know, how can we get our sensory people to sign up for our classes? How do we get our class people to sign up for sensories or subscription yeah. services? That's awesome. Yep. Yep. Nice. Okay. Uh, Coach Nanyam, you're up, friend. Yes. Um, you know, we, we were, you know, we were talking about how different ways you can, um, develop the, the, the subscription boxes. And mm -hmm. one of the things I, one of the, well, one of the things I thought about was you could actually use your subscription boxes as a welcome kit. Yes. And also, um, just now I was just thinking, you know, because because the one of the first things that kids learn is manners. Mm. You could also um, have something like a little etiquette kit, you know, when they first come in, when they learn, yeah. you know, different manners and what have you. So... That was, that was my takeaway. Perfect. Yes. Using subscription kits uh, or, or just boxes period for welcome kits. That's awesome. Nice job. All right, Paula, you're up. Um, Beth, I just wanted to comment on your idea to do 
the one-time box. Um, I did a one-time box for my students and it took me approximately um, 10 days, um, eight to 12 hour days. Um, and one of the boxes, I can't remember exactly how many pounds it turned out to be. I think it was like 25 pounds. <laughs> um, I had to mail it from Arizona to New Mexico. I could have probably driven it there cheaper. <laughs> Not now, but then I could have. Um, it cost me $35 to mail. Wow. I, I lost money on that one. Thankfully, my other student was local and I was able to drop it off and got to actually watch her open it, which was so cool. Mm. Um, but I do include a lot of um, items that we reuse over and over again. And I'll just say, you know, for this one, you need your buttons. And for this one, you need the tongs and the pom-poms and, you know, so forth and so on. But just be warned, if you choose to do it all at one time, it's going to be some very long days because <laughs> you have to get them all out at the same time. It's not like you can send them, you know, I'll send this one this week and next, this one next month. And no, it's all at once. Yep. And you got to know what you're doing for those many weeks. You got to plan that far ahead, which some of us do. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, Paula. Thank you so much. All yep. right, friends. Uh, this was so cool. Let me pin myself again. Awesome. Thank you everyone for your ideas. This has been awesome. Again, in Preschool All-Stars, we do a monthly masterclass every month. So come join us, uh, preschoolallstars.com.